You just picked up Warcraft Rumble, which you thought was just a Clash Royale clone, you jumped into the game and had no idea what you were doing. What the hell are these? Who's this weirdo and how can I become that happy? And how on earth am I supposed to kill this monstrosity? Well, good news. I've been no life in this game for what seems like weeks, as well as watching a ton of tutorials about it, and in this video I'm going to share everything I learned with you. By the end of this video, you will be about as good at the game as this guy is. As soon as you start out in the game and finish your first few matches, you'll be presented with a couple of really important choices. The first one will be your choice of leader. Now, the three options you get presented here appear to be pretty random, with a whole bunch of different leaders being presented the 10 times I've done this. So my main piece of advice for beginners is to go with pretty much any leader who isn't Jaina. No hate at all to Jaina, but she is super squishy and will die almost immediately. Out of all the leaders I've been presented with, my two top choices would have to be... In first place, Rend Blackhand, an awesome leader who is literally mounted on a flying fire-breathing dragon, and who then jumps off the dragon when it dies and rushes straight into battle swinging your sword. This guy is really easy to use for beginners because he's both a flying AoE and a ground AoE unit at the same time. And additionally, he also makes all of your other flying units cheaper. And my other top pick is this guy named Baron Rivendare, who incidentally is also one of the coolest looking. Baron is a tank, meaning he can absorb a ton of damage. He's really fast because he's mounted on this horse. And he has this super useful ability that occasionally spawns skeletons on all of your buildings. This ability is great for filling up the lanes and keeping your opponent busy, as well as sometimes giving you access to free chests of gold and killing squishy units like the kobold. Oh, and by the way, the units in this game are called minis, so let's call them that from now on. The next important choice will be to select your first regular mini. All of these are tanks. Honestly, most of the choices you get here are good ones, but for me, the clear winner for beginners is definitely the footman. This guy is great because it's a squad of five, which makes them effective against swarm minis like this flock of chickens, and allows them to be split across multiple sides of the map, meaning they can get both of these chests. Okay, so that's our starter deck. We've got some ranged minis, some AoE, a few tanks, and a spell. However, it's not quite complete. We still need one more mini type that we don't yet have, which brings us to our next tip. Siege minis are a super effective mini type that has just one purpose, to lay siege to buildings. As you can see from this tooltip, they do double damage to buildings. Attacking and taking buildings is a core part of the game that will give you access to spawn points and often allow you to easily mine gold as well. Therefore, I strongly recommend that all new players pick up a Siege Mini as soon as possible. So, as soon as you unlock the grid at level 4, make sure you check it regularly for any Mini marked Siege under the Traits section. The one I personally use is this bad boy, who is basically like a giant rock monster who stomps his way towards the enemy, absorbing absolutely anything they can throw at him. He's really easy to use and is a key part of almost all my wins. So this game throws a ton of new minis at you, basically forcing you to unlock minis when doing quests, killing bosses, and when leveling up. However, at the same time, you're often granted XP bonuses that randomly select minis from your entire collection to give XP to. This includes both minis you're actually using, and ones you plan to never use again. Which means you're going to be investing XP in minis that you don't actually want to use. So to minimize this potential waste of XP, I highly recommend that you try not to spend your coins buying minis from the grid. Instead, save them up for the future once you get some more time in the game and aren't a total noob.
So you're trucking along killing boss after boss after boss, leveling up your minis and unlocking a whole bunch of stuff. And then you reach this boss and get absolutely destroyed. Do not pester me, child! Ouch, that really hurt. And then you try again, same result. Utter domination. At this point, you might be tempted to rage quit and go play some sideswipe. After all, sideswipe absolutely slaps. But no, seriously, my tip here is don't worry if you get wrecked. Losing matches is a totally normal part of the game that you are supposed to experience. So all you need to do is to go back to some earlier bosses and rerun them to level up your minis. Additionally, once you unlock quests at level 14, you can grind them as well for additional XP. Then once you're ready, go back to that boss that wrecked you and get some sweet revenge. One of the best things about this game is that not only is it really fun to play, like smashing Murloc Boy's face here with my Molten Lava Giant cannot ever get old. But it's also completely free. Yes, it has a cash shop and a very expensive and enticing one at that, which may make you want to compare this game to pay to win games like Diablo Immortal, but I assure you it's totally different. Whilst spending money in this game may help speed things up, grabbing something like the Arclight Booster or buying one of these army packs, ultimately you really don't need to. So keep your money and just enjoy the game. Build the deck of your dreams, jump into PvE and try it out, and then go wreck people in PvP. Okay, so those are my 5 tips on how to get started in Warcraft Rumble. However, if you're watching this video soon after I put it out, and you don't live in one of these countries, you may not even be able to play this game. If you do want to check it out before it gets released in the rest of the world, you can do so by jumping on Bluestacks, opening a 64-bit Pi instance, and then downloading the game on there. Once you're in, you can either log in as a guest, or you can connect your Battle.net account. I've tested out both of these options and I 100% guarantee that it works regardless of your region. If you've never used Bluestacks before and you need help getting it set up, check out my tutorial about that on my channel. The link to that video is in the video description. And come join the Mogs Discord server if you want to hang out with me and other Mogs viewers. And go check out my second channel if you want to see me play games live, including Rocket League, Sideswipe and maybe coming soon, Warcraft Rumble. And like the video if you liked it, dislike it if not. Subscribe for more videos like this, as well as a whole bunch of other gaming content. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.